All right, dude, tonight we have Texas A&M Corpus Christi facing Texas Southern with the winner facing the number one seed in the Midwest. That is Kansas Southern favored by three and a half tonight. Which bet stands out to you in this one? Yeah, these are tough games in the first four. Um, you know, you have the last bubble teams playing each other, uh, the at-large bids who are all relatively even. And you have four of these 16 seeds playing each other, which is is tough to gauge. Um, I think this one in particular is the hardest of the first four games to bet. So uh, I, I deferred over to the DraftKings playbook where Greg Peterson from from VEASAN has an article and he actually chose to, to write up this game. Um, and he's he's taken the three and a half points with Texas A&M Corpus Christi, which I, I generally lean to in, in these games. We've got Bryant as a three and a half point dog on Wednesday in the 16 seed game. I do lean towards Bryant in that game and wrote that one up in my article. Um, you know, if you're getting over a possession in these games with two 16 seeds playing for their lives, trying to make the tournament and play a team, you know, in these one seeds that they never book on their regular season schedules, I, I want to take the points. So, you know, you've got Southern team that turns the ball over at a, at a higher rate. I think that A&M Corpus Christi will be able to take advantage of that and keep this at least within a possession. Second game in action today features Wyoming against Indiana. Follow Jules on Twitter if you need more anger, angry tweets about St. Bonaventure. These two are competing to be the 12 seed that will face five seeded uh, St. Mary's in the East. So Indiana's favored here by four. What's the best bet in this matchup, dude? Speaking of four point spreads, the Bonnies play Colorado in the NIT tonight. They're four point underdogs. <laughs> lay the four, lay the four with Colorado. The Bonnies are done. Um, <laughs> Stick into this game with a four-point spread, though. I think that the number's going in the right direction. This one opened, I, I think, three and a half on DK Sportsbook when we were doing the live show on Sunday night. It's up to four. I agree with the movement. I think that Indiana is the side. Um, Wyoming's a good team. They snuck in. I, there, some of those, uh, you know, teams that got snubbed, I think, maybe deserve to be in over Wyoming. They started the season 21-3, and three, and they have limped down the stretch to get in. They finished four and five, so... They haven't even been that good lately, whereas you've got Indiana. They're on a 6-1 and one against the spread run, made a deep run in the uh, Big Ten tournament, knocked off the one seed in Indiana, had Iowa, the eventual tournament winner, on the ropes, but lost on a buzzer, uh, close to a buzzer beater three off the glass. I think that Indiana is going to be the right side of this one. Just better team, two teams going in opposite directions, um, with Wyoming trending down, as are the Bonnies. All right, we head on tonight's games. Uh, let's take a look at the full bracket now. Uh, first round starts on Thursday, dude. What do you have your eye on in the first round? So give us some of your strongest plays. Yeah, I, I like the Friday card better than the Thursday card, but there are a couple spots that I really like on Thursday, and I want to start with one that has everybody's attention. How many people are taking the South Dakota State Jackrabbits as that 13 seed to upset four seed Providence, whether it's betting them as the short underdog, whether it's putting them, uh, advancing them in their brackets, um, disrespect to Providence, disrespect to all season. And I know the analytics don't necessarily back them up. And uh, the argument is that they've been a lucky team. Providence, have, Providence has been lucky and that is true, but they can also be lucky and good. It's not a coincidence that they're winning all these games in crunch time. Now you're giving me a South Dakota team that a South Dakota State team that they've lost, you know, they they won every game in conference. They were like 20-0 or 21-0. They also lost a game as a 22-point favorite this season. And every time they played any level of competition that was close to Providence, they lost and failed to cover. I think the closest example was probably being 12-and-a-half-point underdogs against Alabama, and they lost that game by 16. So I don't know why, just because they steamrolled in the Summit League, that all of a sudden they're going to be able to play with competition that they haven't been able to play with all season. Um, and Providence just keeps winning. So Providence money line, I bet it at minus 130, forget the points. Uh, disrespect. When are you going to be able to just take a short money line for a four seed against 13? Providence is going to win this game. Uh, final four futures are up on the DK Sportsbook as well, dude. So the one seeds here, Gonzaga, Arizona, Kentucky, Baylor, all with the best odds to make it there. But where's the value in these futures, though? Like, is it a team not in the top four? What do you think? So there's two higher seeds that I have in the national championship game in my bracket that I think are good bets. And that would be Arizona as a one seed. I think they're around plus 150. Um, and I, I just think the way that they're rolling right now, you know, without their starting point card, they, they took down UCLA with uh, with style in, in the Pac-12 championship game. A Arizona's big, versatile. They play both ends of the floor. 
and I like what their side of the bracket looks like. Um, so I think Arizona's going to get there, and I think Kentucky, as a two seed out of the East, um, they got an injured Baylor squad on their side. They got a Purdue team that can't seem to put it together on their side. Um, I, I love what Kentucky has, and if they meet Gonzaga in the Final Four, I've got Kentucky in that game. So Kentucky and Arizona there. If you want to look a little deeper, obviously – Gonzaga should go to the final four. They're the best team. Um, but if you want to look in their bracket, like the Arkansas U- UConn winner, you can get a great plus price on that team to make the final four or even the elite eight. They have what it takes to beat the Zags. The Zags have proven beatable. They lost to Duke. They lost to Alabama. They've lost silly games. So that's where I would take a long shot. And then I think that the Midwest is probably the most open region. Um, I think that Kansas loses to Iowa. So I think Iowa's potentially a trendy future worth getting into there. And on the bottom, I think if we get an LSU-Auburn Sweet 16 game, all SEC, I don't think LSU is going to back down in that game. I think LSU could get into the Sweet 16 Elite Eight here and maybe even play Auburn in, uh, play Iowa in that Elite Eight game. Um, before you take off here, dude, before the action gets started, let's get your take here on, uh, on a champion because Gonzaga is favored at plus 300. Uh, but would you be looking at someone else, maybe someone with a little longer odds? I know the Zags have been number one for – most of the season, number one overall seed again, and for a good reason. Yeah, they're good, um, but I can't take them. Uh, they, you know, they've made a couple of national championship games recently and obviously lost them. Uh, they just can't seem to get over the hump, and I don't think this team is nearly as good as last year's team yep. that wound up losing to Baylor. So they're going to be in the mix. I think they should be in the Final Four, although watch out for that UConn-Arkansas winner. Um but I can't take plus 300 on a champion. So I said, I, th- I think that my national championship game uh, in my bracket is Arizona and Kentucky. So those are the two teams I'm going to look at. I think they have the best path to the final four. And uh, I think that they are the two most matchup proof teams in the tournament. Great guard play, good size in the middle. A lot of things that will uh, well coach a lot of experience, two things that will, will, you know, serve you well in this tournament. So those are the two teams I'm looking at an Arizona Kentucky final. 